Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Perizno. Now, when we left off, we participated in one of the biggest battles so far with some Geldaran special units. Well, technically, they were just the big armies around their territory, but it was still pretty cool to see. Anyway, we have now, of course, in as, as in the previous episode, we walked all the way from the forests of Elentor, and we have now arrived, well, technically we've been here for a while, I've fought a number of parties, not too many, about two, three, and it's really difficult, actually, to find these sandstalkers, because every single time you find one, they're just fast enough to sort of stay a little bit ahead of you, and then as soon as they get you know, further away from their original sort of starting area, someone, one of the vassals from some faction, or maybe a patrol, or just something, comes out of nowhere, attacks them, kills them instantly, and then you've just kind of wasted all that time. So, hopefully, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to fight more of these, and yeah, hopefully we're gonna have a bit of a bit better luck, I suppose. Now, I have gained a nice weapon. I gained this sword in the previous battle that I partook in, so it was pretty pretty good, you know, it's pretty good. It's it's a, an okay weapon, it's got 31 cutting damage, which is three less than the two-handed that we previously acquired, but I felt like maybe it was a little bit better because it was one-handed and I could also use a shield at the same time, so I thought, yeah, okay, fine, let's just go with that. And hopefully it's going to, you know, make a good deal of difference to our survivability. I'm hoping. Now, obviously, what we do want to try and do is, with Scout, we need to try and eliminate these units here in the front. These Sandwalkers. If we can eliminate the Sandwalkers, or at the very least get some experience from them, then I think we'll be in really, really good shape. Because, as it stands, the Sandstalkers can actually kill me very, very quickly because they have... Well, these throwing weapons, I actually don't even know what they're using. Are they throwing axes? No, they, they seem to use quite a few different throwing weapons. Unfortunately, I am missing most of the time. I did kill some, didn't I kill two or something? Uh, two is probably not the best, but it's all right, it's all right, because we can get these refugees and we can get these farmers and so on and so forth, and they do become glory-seeking men, which I believe level up into units that have blunt weapons. So if we can rescue a number of farmers, then we might be able to, you know, have a pseudo ransom taking, brokering, slave trading sort of thing going on, which would actually be pretty cool. Now, I don't know whether, yeah, that's the thing, I don't know whether to impose any kind of armor limit on myself or not. I think that might be a bit too far, considering we are playing Perizno, and Perizno is very difficult as it is. I mean, obviously, we, hmm, that's actually a pretty nice two-handed saber, but as you can see, I'm using an old saber. It is one-handed. I'd actually like something that can either crush through blocks, which I highly doubt we'll be able to use, because usually that is going to be consisting of a two-handed weapon of some sort in Perizno. Or maybe something that can have a bonus against shields. I think we might be able to do that. That would probably be the most likely thing. Now, I've just been walking around this Sandwalker Den for the most part. And there, as you can see, there's actually a number of tracks in that direction. Because, yeah, the Draharans have kind of been cracking down on the Sandwalkers in this area. Alright, so we're in the dark. And, yeah, as you know, I, I really don't like fighting in the dark. But the last time I waited for the day to come, there was many, many reasons why we probably shouldn't do that in Perizno, because even though I may like the daytime, because I can actually see things, yeah, the main problem is, of course, once again, random, really, really powerful parties. Hilariously enough, there was, I, I actually spotted some Elantoran elites in this area. I have no idea why the elites are all the way here. I mean, they are technically, you know, from the forest, so I, I don't know why they would be in the desert. It's really crazy. Shoot him in the kneecap. Yeah, apparently I... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> apparently shot him in the knee. Hmm. Yes. That was completely by accident, hilariously enough. Oh, well, there we go. So, we are... Yeah, we're just going to continue taking these. I'm not entirely sure if I want to continue taking these, because obviously, you know, it would be kind of nice to perhaps have... Uh, 
Well, I don't know really. I mean, I'm gonna have quite a few different ones, obviously, quite a few different neutral units, but obviously the one thing that I wanna do is if I have enough money, I'm actually gonna use that, I think. I think that looks a little bit better and might give us a little bit more protection, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah, it gives us a little bit of head armor, which I suppose does come in mighty handy. But yeah, anyway, as I said, I think I probably wanna try to get some of the mercenary units from the mercenary guilds. Obviously, we're gonna try and do that because you can customize the armor and weapons of those guys, and I think it would be pretty cool to have our own completely customized army. So if I can do something in regards to, oh, what's that over there? Uh, they're moving a little bit too fast for my liking. But yeah, if I could do something in regards to that, then that would be fantastic because I think those guys actually would be probably some of the best we can get, some of the best units, maybe if not the best units, and they might actually be pretty good in terms of our wages as well. I'm actually unsure about that, so I'm going to have to check to see. Oh, uh, right. Okay, so let, let's just, wait a minute, let's just have a look and see. Drahar and Spearman, they shouldn't be too too bad, so let's... Let's actually try this. This is the first time we're doing a battle that is sort of on evil... Uh, evil? <laughs> evil terms. Yes. No. Even. Even terms. Yeah. We're going to be trying to do that because obviously mostly what, I'm, what I've been doing is just attacking people that are a little bit lower in units than us. And usually that makes a you know good deal of sense because obviously you don't want to be outnumbered, do you? You don't want to be outnumbered, but I suppose it could pay off relatively good if we are able to capitalize on it. Obviously, my yeah, my shooting skills are pretty awful at the moment. Actually, I'm actually hitting things. I'm actually kind of surprised. Oh, well. Maybe I can hit a couple more. Can I? Maybe. Just kill the sand walkers, please. Kill the sand walkers. Yes. I actually did did hit one of them, I think. There we go. Yep. Yeah, there we go. We got a kill. Amazing. And I headshot one of... Whoops. I'm I'm terribly sorry. Yes. Terribly sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's amusing. Okay, so now I'm going to need to go into battle. And this is not very good for me because I don't have any power strike. And... Ooh, ooh. There we go. I actually did some damage to that guy. I'm pretty surprised about that because these guys, they actually have pretty decent armor. And when I tried attacking with my two-handed weapon in a previous fight. Basically, yeah, things didn't go too well. I was able to do about five damage maximum. And I don't know why, because they were sandwalkers, sandstalkers, so, you know, they shouldn't have the best armor, should they? Well, never mind. I think that's fine. Now, what is amusing, hmm, as we pick up a new saber. Yes, a new saber. Is that actually better than what I have? It is. Remarkably better, actually. So we're going to be taking those, taking these, taking all of these. Thank you very much. And then we're going to be, oh yeah, apparently leveling to six. That's fantastic. Okay. So yeah, otherwise, what we want to try and do is also, <laughs> our weekly cost is crazy. Our weekly cost is absolutely crazy. But yeah, we're going to obviously have to repay our debt and we're actually pretty close to doing that so I'm, I'm quite happy with that let's go for volunteers wait what do they become bounty yes there we go that's what we want we want them to become bounty hunters because as far as I'm aware they do become what is it now they do become uh, well blunt weapon users that's it they become blunt weapon users and I thought that might be pretty good and they are on mounts which is obviously going to make a huge difference to us so yeah, I think that should be good. Uh, during today's training, you are accidentally injured. Oh. Oh, did I take it? Did I take damage? Yeah, I think I took a little bit of damage. All right, so let's... Uh, do I actually have prisoners? I have one prisoner. That is... Uh, it's probably not even worth it, is it? Well, never mind. Let's just go and sell all of this. Yes. Ooh, lovely money. Very, very lovely money. I wasn't able to get too much loot from the previous bands that I fought because they were just so small so they would give me two to three items each so it really does pay off to fight a bigger band I'm going to be keeping this horse in our inventory so that we can move a little bit faster and we're just going to you know buy a little bit of extra food as well and should I just see if the guildmaster maybe has a quest uh 
Yeah, uh, okay, fine, fine. I'm gonna try it. But I highly doubt we'll be able to do it because no doubt these guys are either going to be killed really, really easily by someone in the area. We still have 2,688, by the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the troublesome bandits have been eliminated by another party. Yes, of course they have. I mean, really. Yes, it's absolutely hilarious in Parisno. If you need a bandit party killed, then just play Parisno because Parisno is crazy with the amount of really, really big parties that will engage anyone. They will engage anyone. They will engage, you know, bandit parties with five people in it. And they'll also probably engage, you know, higher levels as well. But I, I guess they'll more, they're more than likely to run away from those. Okay, so I do know that there are Sakaar bandits in this area. Or there, at the very least, should be. I'm hopeful that there will be. Because I'd like to get some more renown. I do have 137 at the moment. I don't know how much the princess has. Which is obviously going to be a bit of a problem. Because we need to get... Maybe more than her? I actually have no idea how that works, to be honest. I I have only before married, I think, twice? Maybe three times in the entire time that I've been playing Mountain Blade. So, obviously, I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to the... Ah, there's a Sakaar camp. When it comes to the intricacies surrounding marriage. I do know that you need 20 relation. But, obviously, I've never really married a vassal. So this is going to be pretty interesting to find out what, what's actually going on. All right, so six point... Wow, they're moving very fast. This is very irritating. Uh, and... <laughs> oh, yeah. That's exactly what I mean. As soon as you're chasing some guys, someone just comes out of nowhere and then it's just like, surprise, and they just take them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay in this area. Hopefully we'll be able to find some. I mean, that's the thing. We can find them. We just can't catch them. Oh, wow. Okay, that... Well, sheesh. Yeah, that was that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. So, yeah, these Sakaar Raiders, I saw them on the edge of their territory, you know, where the Sakaar camp was. And, okay, I thought to myself, okay, let's dedicate ourselves to chasing these guys. They're faster than me. They got delayed by one of the vassal parties, but thankfully the vassal party was pretty large. So, uh, you know, obviously they, they couldn't catch them, because I can't catch them, and I have fewer units in my party. So, yeah, they couldn't catch them. They diverted them towards me. I thought to myself, yes, this is my lucky day. And then, well, and then they just kind of pulled away from me, and that was not that was not very good, was it? No, that wasn't very good. And now this is also not particularly good, but they are horse archers, it seems. So we might actually have some good luck here. Okay, I'm just going to tell my units just to charge in here. Because it's no use all of them just kind of holding position and not really doing much. Now, obviously, I think we're probably going to be fine here. Yeah, it's mo more than likely that we're going to be fine. But, yeah, I just received my weekly wages as well. And my weekly wages are currently about 200, hilariously enough. Well, technically, it was about 213, to be precise. But the main thing that I want to highlight with those weekly wages is that... We have 600 mercenary payment, which is actually really nice, in my opinion. Having 600 mercenary payment, I mean, that's crazy. I think that's really, really cool. And hopefully we'll be able to continue up with that. Oh, that was a nice hit. There we go. But yeah, hopefully we'll be able to continue gaining a good amount. Now, I also have to report that the Lord, or should I say the Liege, of the Geldarans has been taken prisoner. I, apparently, uh, because I saw that he's been taken prisoner by the Elentor, and I would expect the Gardarans to be eliminated relatively soon as a result, because he is the biggest force that they have. You know, he's the he's the strongest that they have, and if he's been taken prisoner, then I can only assume there have been some rather epic battles going on. And if I wasn't here trying to stay afloat. In terms of my debts and everything, because obviously, you know, what is it? I think it's, I think after 14 days, it's not been 14 days just yet since I took my loan, I don't think. But once it's 14 days, it, the interest goes up to 40%. So <laughs> that's going to be, uh, that's going to be pretty harsh. That is going to be pretty harsh. Unfortunately, we only gained two renown for that. But we are gaining some really nice 
weapons and armor, and that's actually a pretty nice shield. I'm going to be taking that, thank you very much. The helm is not as good, the bow is obviously not as good, we'll just take all of that, thank you very much. Alright, so we're doing okay. There are some deserters down here, which I actually thought might be pretty nice as well, but as you see, this is where we, this is where I spotted them, right? We went over here, and then there was a vassal around this area, and then he, he chased him off into this direction, and then I thought, yes, okay, we can get him, and then he went this way again. So, hilarious, I don't even know. Don't even know what's going on with those guys, but yeah. Now this is also, uh, Drahar and Patrol, stay away, please. Thank you. They are moving at 7.0, though. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch these guys. I think it's going to be absolutely impossible. How are these guys moving at 6.9? I guess they just have a really high pathfinding skill, and I technically don't. So it might be an idea for us to level up some pathfinding, or at the very least, to get a companion that has more pathfinding. Alright, so we're going to go for more Charisma, and we're going to go for Persuasion, of course. And we're going to level up our one-handed, because apparently we're going to be using one-handed weapons instead. So yeah, that guy is just going to walk off into the sunset. I'm just going to allow him to go, because that's very annoying. And how much money do I have now? I have 2,600. I have almost enough to pay off our debt. Ugh. Maybe I can sell a couple of things, and maybe that would make the difference. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's just see here. Yeah, 317. Just about. Hilarious. Ugh. That's not enough. That is not enough. Okay, well, what I'm going to have to do is do a little bit more off screen. I'm going to have to fight some more and... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I think actually what we're going to do is instead... Wait a minute, where am I? I don't want to walk into a really, really large bandit party or something. But yeah, what we're going to do is... I was actually going to end the episode, but I think it might be a really nice idea for us to see whether we can get some mercenary units. And I know that I think they're probably going to cost a huge amount to maintain. But if we can get about maybe 10, 10 of them, and maybe if we can level them up to a pretty high standard we might be able to have a pretty unstoppable force because as it stands right now, we're using... What do, what do I need to get now? Volunteers. Yeah, I think I need... Yeah, I need to get volunteers. But yes, as it stands right now, we have this one Elantoran Crimson Ranger. Now, this guy is utter insanity, as you can see. He has 500 archery proficiency, 9 in power draw, and just look at his regular stats as well. It's just absolutely crazy. He is an absolutely crazy unit, and it would be fantastic if we could get other units similar to him. Now, obviously, that's going to take quite some time to level up something to that standard, but it would be a really nice idea if we could start along that path. Now, obviously, you've got to bear in mind that if... This is my contingency plan, by the way. If I am defeated again, you know, because obviously the Geldarans, they kind of diminished my party initially, and we've fought to get back to this point, so it would be really cool if we could keep this strength up, but if we can't, and if, you know, if we're defeated again, you know, because it's, I think it's going to happen, I mean, it's just inevitable really with Perizno, you're sometimes going to pick a fight, and that fight is, you know, sometimes not going to work out in your favor, and when that happens, because I'm not going to say if, but yeah, I, I, okay, fine, I'll say if. If that happens, then it would make sense for us to then enlist and try to get an, a little bit of cash that way. Because obviously what we're doing right now is we're leveling up units, we're making our party into the strongest it can be, and hopefully that will prevent us from obviously then losing the amount of battles that we would otherwise lose. Because, you know, you want the best possible units in your army. And hopefully, by going to the Mercenary Guild, that is going to prevent us from losing. Now, obviously, the main thing that we have to consider is their weekly wages. They're going to be extremely difficult. I think I have to go up here, don't I? To speak to the guy that, you know, we, where we can recruit customizable units. Isn't he here? Isn't that him? No, that's not him. I think he's all the way at the top. Sergeant of the Guard. Hello. Hello there. Yeah, I think he's up here. 
Yeah, there he is. Hello, Ingvar. Yes, there we go. What is this place? Yeah, I already know what this place is, but hopefully you're going to tell me other things. I want to recruit. All right. Hired recruits. There we go. So they have a joining cost, which is obviously a bit of an issue. But I think I'm going to get 20. I'm going to get 20 of these. So, yeah, let's get 10 and let's get 20. There we go. All right. So now they become hired soldiers and hired archers. Now, obviously, what we're going to need to do is outfit them in the best armor that we can currently give them. So, oh, we, oh, we could hire recruits of a different race, actually. Yeah, I, I should have gone for elf females or elf males, to be honest. That would have made the most sense. Ah, uh, ah, uh, well. Ah, uh, okay, well, that, I, I guess, I guess we're just going to be all inclusive, aren't we? Yeah, we're just going to have all kinds of people joining us. Ah, uh, well, never mind. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's change his equipment. Okay, so we're going to give him heavy body armor. Or not, as the case may be. What are his stats like, actually? He has 10 strength, so he can use some of that armor. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to give him medium, I think. We're just going to give him medium armor. Do I actually need to buy this? I don't need to buy this, do I? So what difference does it make? I, I mean, he could easily use heavy body armor, right? Yeah, so why, do, why doesn't he use that? I guess, oh no, that's going to increase his weekly wage, isn't it? But yeah, that is going to increase his weekly wage. But does it matter so much? Uh, okay, fine. Let's let's just let's just do that. And we're gonna need some light. No, no, I don't really want. What about medium? Okay, let's just let's just give him that. Why not? Okay, so he is gonna need some awesome bow. Yeah, he can only use a hunting bow at the moment. Uh, okay, well, it seems like I'm gonna need to give him just a one-handed sword then, or. Maybe we should just give him a one-handed mace. Something like a Tolranian mace or something along those lines. I think that's absolutely fine. We're just going to do that. And then we're going to give him a shield. Let's just give him one of these. There you go. And then we're going to give him a horse. There we go. Yeah. A Drahar, really? Drahar and ponies? Come on now. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, apparently we're good. We're just going to give him Drahar and ponies or a saddle horse. No, we'll just give him a saddle horse. Why not? There we go. All right, so that is what he's going to be using right now. And hopefully that's going to mean that his wages are not too large. Let's have a look. His wages are only four. That's crazy. I thought that when you improved your, your gear, it actually made a difference to your wages. Apparently not. Anyway. That will be it for this episode. I'm going to try and level up a couple of these. So I'm going to put them to, you know, relatively high up in our list. And I'm going to try and level some of them up to the next stage. I'm going to go for hired archers. Because I want them to become horse archers eventually. And I think that would probably be the best basis for them. So, I thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.